Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part two of the All My Guns for Now uh, collection tour. Gonna have some fun here. Again, this is part two, but it's basically the same as part one. No worries if you didn't see that yet. Basically, today we're gonna go through the SBRs, the cool guns down there. Yes, that is what it appears to be. We're also gonna go through the door, the top of the tool chest, and uh, explore a couple goodies inside as well. Uh, if you want to see part one, that covered everything else with the wall, the floor, everything up there, down there, behind there, which also included the GM6 links. Go check that out if you want to see that stuff. But for today, we have the rest as well as an update on the giveaway, which I announced in my last video. More on that later, but let's just, let's get into it here. So, kicking things off, front and center. No, not a Draco unless you're in Czechoslovakia. is This is the VZ-58. This is basically a pistol. This one is essentially an SBR at this point, but uh, man, she is a good, cool time. Quick disclaimer, I made this in the first video as well. All the guns have been cleared. We're all good to go. I'm probably not gonna clear every single gun as we go through this, and I'm gonna handle basically everything. So don't get your panties in a bunch. Let's just get through this as a team. Everyone will be fine, I promise. So this guy here, we have a seven and a half inch barrel chambered in 7.62 by 39. This is a short little cute little mag. But overall, this is a, a very fun gun fitted with a compensator up front. This thing pops more than tarts. It is an incredibly, incredibly good time. Alrighty, another fan favorite, the SIG 553. This thing, this is really cool. This is probably the coolest AK. This is essentially the Draco from Switzerland because the SIG 55X platforms are essentially just better AKs for uh, for lack of a better term. They are very cool. They are very fantastic. And uh, I love them very much. Anyways, that's, uh, that's that guy. Now we have something a little less common. This is an AR-15 chambered in 5.56. However, it has this Ford Forward charging handle, a lot of other cool things. This is an AdCore Defense Bear, B-E-A-R. Really neat unit. What makes this unique is much the same as the PWS series where it is a long stroke. So basically an AK action tucked inside an AR platform. Very cool. Um, this uh, forward side charging platform is, I really do like that. In general, I'm more of a fan of the PWS because it is super sexy and the owner, Dean Sylvester, is a wizard engineer and has done a lot of really cool things to make that platform run super efficiently and effectively. Next is one of my most favorite looking AR-15 builds. This is the AR-15 by Battle Arms Development. Absolutely gorgeous receiver set with all the lightning cuts. This one is missing and a recharging handle, was a Raptor. Um, I actually just gave it to my buddy Evan because he's a super good dude and uh, yeah. He visited me and brought me some cool stuff from Wolverine Supplies. And I was like, you know what, buddy? Here's a rack charging handle. So just a future disclaimer. If you show up to my house with machine guns in a friendly manner, mind you, there's definitely two ways that can go down. But if you're friendly with machine guns, I will probably give you a Raptor charging handle. On that note, I want to say a very warm thank you to the fine gentleman at Radian who sent up a care package all the way from Redmond, Oregon, with a hella cool care package of, they all fell upside down, that's kind of depressing, Raptors and Talons. So uh, my SR25 is finally gonna get its matching NP3 coated Talon, but a lot of my other ARs are gonna get a nice little tasteful upgrade as well. So Fraker, Kerry, Michael, Joshua, and the dude on Instagram, Josiah. You fantastic bastards, thank you a ton. I'm looking forward to outfitting all the guns I can with cool Radiant kit. And now we shall continue with an, an always a favorite, the Bushmaster ACR. This is like the forgotten stepchild of the firearms industry. And it, once again, it is up in the air as to who is gonna take over it. However, in the meantime, my good buddy Dana and Templar Precision is doing a lot of cool things with the ACR platform. He's got new all aluminum lowers, Hand guards, reduced weight trunnions, even barrels, lots of fantastic stuff, as does my buddy RPM Tool up in Canada, up in Vancouver, BC, making these hella fine hand guards. So go hit him up as well. Carrying on, someone in the last video commented about the Colt Canada 
So uh, I promised we would get that in the second video, and this is one of them. This is an IUR upper, which is an integrated upper receiver, basically a monolithic unit here, made for British's SAS. This is a 10.5, and I would liken this to being a direct impingement 460. This thing is a little tank, runs fantastically, and I would just like to take a moment to say that Colt Canada kicks Colt USA's ass every day of the month. Anyways, good to accept their, their charging handles. These ambidextrous charging handles suck. So uh, this will rapidly be getting replaced with uh, one of those. Also, a quick mention, the lower receiver on here is made by another Canadian manufacturer, Alberta Tactical Rifle Systems, and it is incredibly high quality. Really dig it. Solid dude, Rick and Dustin and the team guys at ATRS, currently giving the Trudeau government hell over some of their recent crappy bands. All the power to those guys. A warm Merry Christmas to the ATRS team. And we're back. Took a quick commercial break to move all the radiant kit off to the side so I wasn't constantly stepping on it. Quick note, guys. For the love of God, please make a 417 charging handle because it needs it. Yes, there are 417s down there. We'll get to that. Next up, though, the 416. Yes, we got a couple HKs coming at you. This is an MR223A3 lower, the full ambi lower, which is actually really, really nice, guys. Topped off with a legit OG 10.4 416 upper. And uh, with that lower, you can manually lock the bolt to the rear as well as uh, drop it in fast fashion. The other cool deal with these things is that you can uh, drop the hammer and then throw her back on safe. So, especially good time. And uh, one of my favorite AR-15 variants. Not the only one, but one of them. By the way, HK's got a cool neon sign out for Christmas. Not sure if you noticed it, but I'm 100% grabbing one of those for the office. Now we have another, again, MR-223A3. This time with the A3 upper as well, the 11 inch upper. This has been quite a bit cannibalized for parts. A lot of them went into the now currently buried XCRM build. Again, see that video if you want to learn more about that. This gun appeared in its full decked out glory in my uh, CQB AR-15s for night vision purposes video. So go check that out if you want to see that. However, this one does have a Geisley trigger, which is hella cool, but he didn't carry over that uh, cool safety feature. Almost on the top here, we got a couple more hiding. We have a B&T. APC 223 SBR, that good old Hega Defense ACR adapter because the factory, the factory stock was kind of crappy. The ACR just makes everything better. This is an incredibly smooth SBR, unbelievably smooth. I have an Odin, Olight Odin, light up top, 2000 lumens on tap. Yes, it's a budget light. I mean, Surefire, Steiner, Cloud Defensive, those are all fantastic guns that would probably suit a B&T very well, but Olight sent me a few Odins, I've been testing them out, and I have to say I'm quite a big fan. I do have a code below, an affiliate link, so you guys can check that out if you want to purchase Olight, because it does support the channel if you do so. All right, laddies, one more up top, and it is once again a VZ-58. This one, though, a little bit different. This is the... 11.8 inch barrel variant. Again, 762 by 39. This thing is a, uh, a heckin' good time. Got some aftermarket kit on here by Fab Defense, Zahal, optics rail, a nice Galil folder, pistol grip, handguard, muzzle brake, and some fancy controls up here as well. Bolt catch and release. These guns, I just really like the VZ58 series. Also have an NEA side charger, which gets the AK charging handle on the right side for, uh, you know, most of us. All right, laddies, that's gonna do it for the top. Moving down to the middle, a nice little spot right there for your EDC. I've got an FN 509 Tactical, which was chilling out in this nice Black Arch Holsters appendix carry thing. Again, link below if you guys wanna check those guys out. Use the code, or use my link rather, it does support the channel. We have a fabulous monocular PVS-14. This is night vision, guys. Let's. Uh, Let's take a quick look. And boom, there we go. Man, night vision, guys, is incredibly cool. This is a Gen 3 Omni 7 tube PVS 40 monocular. Man, night vision is expensive, but it is incredibly underrated in, uh, in what its capabilities are. And it's something that where you definitely want to uh, buy once, cry once, 
and get a good unit. This one is on loan to me from a good buddy, Ian. Thank you a ton, dude. And quickly for reference sake, I'm going to drop the night vision here. You guys are going to see this is actually pitch black. Yet yeah, we can see all this stuff so very well. Boom, just black. All you can see is my little LCD display from my security system inside my safe, and that's literally it. Mm. Guys, definitely take my advice. Look into night vision, literally. It will revolutionize your world <laughs> when the sun goes down. Really cool stuff. Anyways, moving on, we have the UIC Mod 2 by ADM. This thing is fantastic. It's a 13.9, hella fine, by the way. Pin and weld, surefire war comp, so it's not an SBR. This is a, just a regular 16-inch overall rifle. No NFA, no goofy braces. Anyways, thank goodness that got shot down. But nonetheless, this was supposed to be my Gun of the Week series between these two gun collection videos. However, work got in the way and I did not get it done. So look for it next week. It'll be out on my channel. We talked about all the cool details, such as these Radiant Talon safeties, as well as the uh, charging handle of all charging handles, the Radiant Raptor, ambi controls. Overall, just a good time. Topped off with none other than the Elkan Spectre DR, which is my absolute favorite combat optic. Quick shout out to Type A Firearms. I know, I know it's been a battle, but uh, I'm slowly converting them away from Trichicon and to the almighty Elkan. And then down below, we have another fine AR-15 Type gun. This one though, packs an extra punch. Well topped off with another Elkan. This thing is a whole nother animal, being a belt-fed upper. This thing is crazy, though despite being belt-fed, it also takes magazines. So you can uh, you can rock this thing any way you want. Side-charging upper, which is also really cool. I got this thing outfitted with some rail scales as well, because secretly this is a key mod underneath, and uh, that was unfortunate because the industry picked a ditch, and uh, I picked the wrong side. Anyways... We're just going to cover up that uh, unfortunate mistake and move on. We're going to cross the aisle and go over here to Wolverine Supplies, the fantastic people over there who lent me yet another rifle, the Steyr Arms AUG AUG. Gents, the Augie Doggy, we have it here. The OG original waffle mag as well. And guys, check this out. Coolest thing about the AUG, quick change barrel system. Man, for the mid-70s, these guys were thinking. Really, really freaking cool. Again, big thanks to uh, Wolverine Supplies for lending me another one of their beauties from the vault. Up next, we have a couple beautiful Heckler und Kochs. We have the, this is much like the 416 I originally talked about, the MR223A3 lower with the 416 upper. This is the same thing bumped up a notch. We have the MR308A3 lower with a 417 12 inch assaulter upper. Very cool. Complete with a BNT blast deflector. This thing is a really good time. Just missing that little touch from uh, Radian. They don't make a charging handle for this bad boy yet, but hopefully soon they will. I will do my part in heckling them until they do. But uh, just a really fine firearm and one that I hope to have content out on later in 2021. Then we have the big brother semi-automatic DMR version of that, the HK G28. Oh, this thing is a beautiful boat anchor. And I say that with love, but she is a thick, heavy girl, but I love her. Chambered in 7.62 by 51 NATO with a fluted chamber. This thing is a heckin' good time, super smooth action like unbelievably buttery smooth potentially the smoothest ar action i felt it's fantastic topped off with a schmidt and bender made for hk 3 to 20 by 50 pm2 optic this thing is really nice illuminated all the good stuff though i did swipe the fancy little uh aim point micro up that was normally up top here in favor of the acr over there because uh it needed something by the way guys in case you haven't noticed I switched up the plaid today. Fun fact, while that's the OG plaid, this is, by all accounts, the fan favorite. When I do my Instagram posts, usually that's, uh, you know, outside rocking a gun. Of course, those posts uh, feature an arm clad in plaid. And whenever the arm makes the cut and the flannel is visible, I typically uh, get the most comments on this particular one right here. 
Don't know what it was, but my mom got it for me like eight years ago. It's a good time. Thanks, mom. We get ever closer to the illustrious thingy in the back. Next up, we have a Knight's SR25 ECC. This is the dimpled upper. Complete with the MAMS multi-axis muzzle stabilizing device with the QDC suppressor attachment. Man, I love this gun. Really good time. Got my always favorite Magpul UBR Gen 1 stock. Topped off with a ZCO 420 optic. Good friggin' stuff. And then the uh, NP3 coated Radiant Raptor charging handle. I'm gonna swap out these Knight's 90 degree throw safeties very soon here for a matching NP3 that is uh, waiting down in that pile over there. Speaking of piles of Christmas presents, Ergo, the good guys that make this grip, and a bunch more in this room as they are my kind of favorite go-to AR grip, they also sent a care package full of some stuff. So uh, quick thank you to those guys and all the cool things that they sent. Nice shirt, mouse pad, Another OD green flat top Ergo Deluxe grip. Favorite stuff right there. Some red stuff and a little uh, QD vertical forward grip. Definitely going to feature that on some builds. Oh, and a uh, toque or a beanie because uh, they know I'm up here in Canada and then it's freaking cold. Good stuff. Thanks a ton to the fine folks at Ergo. Grip. Up next, I'm going to try desperately hard to make you a little jelly with my uh, Benelli. TM True Exodus. This thing is a fantastic time. Probably my favorite tube fed 12 gauge shotgun. 100% recommend the uh, RX Arms extended bolt release, a GG and G extended charging handle, and uh, I've also got some Olight kit on here as well. Good times. A lot of YouTube content out on this thing. You guys have definitely liked it. It's been some of my most popular content. So go check that out if you want to learn more. Guys, we're so close to the big crazy gun. But first things first, we have another SIG. Oh, we have a Virtus here. This is a 16 inch 300 blackout, dude. Pretty good time. All right, it's time. We have the RPG-7. Yes, that's what it is. Tease this thing for freaking ever. Oh, here we go. Man, look at this thing. It is what it is. Of course, real live rockets being incredibly illegal. I don't have any of those, but uh, the launcher itself is uh, is legit. Check this out. Cock that, pull the trigger. And that's how this thing works. Really cool. We got the bipod. We got the optic. We got a sling. This thing is a uh, a real fine beauty from a Bulgaria Factory Seven. Let's toss it back in the safe before anyone gets a little too carried away. Now, my dear friends, we are on to the door. First things first, a quick shout out to my cute little puppies who have now joined me. I'm currently dog sitting those guys while I'm finishing my video while my wife does some baking. Gotta love Christmas. Guys, shout out to Black Box Customs for loaning me literally $20,000 worth of these super fine Nighthawk Custom 1911s. Their motto is literally one gun one gunsmith. I've never felt smoother, more well put together 1911s. These things are unreal. This one belongs to my buddy at Black Box. This is uh, Alan's gun. Oh, this one might not be going back to him. Oh man, this thing's just gorgeous. Love it. But essentially here we have a president model. We have three Nighthawk agents. These things are absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Up here we have an XR9 L. It's the long slide version of the XR9, which is the Bond, currently the Bond bullpup. A very unique little pistol. Feeds cartridges backwards into the system, which is pretty darn unique. I'll have some videos up on that pretty soon. Here we have a SIG 1911. These are fantastic value for the money. They're very well put together, very tight units. I definitely like them a lot. I had a 1776 We the People until recently. That went towards a full auto MG42, which will be coming early in the new year. Then we have a trigger group for the M60. An HK P7M13. This is the good old fashioned squeeze cocker. Love this thing. 
a rose gold desert eagle this is the tcn titanium carbon nitride discontinued finish same idea as the current titanium nitride tiger stripe version that is on current guns but this has a matching mag as well 50 ae this thing is a friggin freaking cool time I, I looked long and hard to find one of these this was my favorite finished when i was back in high school then we have the beloved beretta m9a3 equipped this time with a light and a laser which is uh, a fun, fun cat toy. This is a great pistol. Down from there, we have an M92-esque pistol. Also in 9mm, this is a Bursa Thunder 9 Pro. This was actually my first 9mm uh, semi-automatic handgun. It's a single action, which is really nice, a double action, and a uh, features a decocker. Pretty neat weapon. I definitely, uh, definitely like this little guy. And then we have a little browning three-quarter size 1911 and 22. This thing is really great for teaching new shooters how to shoot handguns because it's very light recoiling, fits small frame hands. It's just a really fun, fun little time. And then we have another fan favorite. We have the Smith & Wesson TRR8. This thing is 357 Magnum. This thing has a fantastic trigger. <laughs> Rail top and bottom. This thing is, I really dig this thing. This thing is a fantastic shooter. Very accurate. Again, 38 Special, 357 Magnum. Really, really great time. And last, but certainly not least, on the wall of handguns, we have this AMT Hardballer 1911 Long Slide. This thing is unreal cool. Got this from my buddy Paul at Canadian Firearms Museum, and this apparently might be one of the four guns that was used in Terminator 1, the movie. This is one of the guns that was behind the counter scene. Look up the gun counter scene with Arnold Schwarzenegger and the, the random gun dude. This is where the famous quote was, where he came in asking for a plasma rifle in the 40 watt range, and the dude's like, don't get that, but I do have a long slide 45 with a red laser aiming sight. Now this one doesn't have that red laser aiming sight, but this was otherwise the same gun and the lore has it that there were four of these guns used in the filming of that video. And apparently this might be one of them. The jury is still out on that. I'm hoping my buddy Richard, the Real Deal Movie Arms, can provide a little bit of insight. He certainly does have a lot of experience on the movie side of things, but this is a pretty, pretty cool time. And one 1911 that will definitely remain in my collection. Guys, coming up next, we have the giveaway details as well. We'll just kind of close that off. But first things first, if you guys like my content, I have five things for you. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram at arm.n.gun. Post their daily fun behind-the-scenes content and lots and lots of sexy gun picks. Guys, you had a chance at winning an AccuTac bipod if you participated in the giveaway on my the part one of this video. I'll announce that winner. I'll comment on your post if you got the answer right or were the closest to the correct amount. The uh, challenge was to... Guess how many Canuck bucks were, were in there. I kind of, we didn't do it in the first video. I'll also announce the winner via a community post. So if you go to my channel, all the little buttons on top, you know, videos, playlists, community. And in there, you'll find posts with lots of guns. I post there, I post pictures there, kind of content from my Instagram page a couple times a week. So I'll post there as well to announce the winner. Now we're going to jump into that really quick. But first off, I want to take a quick moment to mention two awesome coffee brands. I have two brands here from Bolt Action Coffee and Arrowhead Coffee, both Canadian brands. I do know Bolt Action ships internationally. It's pretty fantastic stuff. Ironically though, these are not my favorite blends. Favorite Arrowhead blend is their Cleared Hot. Favorite Bolt Action is their Overwatch. This is specialty grain coffee, by the way. This is the really, really good stuff. Anyways, guys, go check those out. I do have a link for Bolt Action in the description below. Purchasing coffee does support the channel. All right, guys, now let's finish this off. Up top, we have an EDM Arms M96 takedown 50 cal rifle. Very similar to the M200 intervention. Same concept, this one's just a little bit bigger and heavier, and we'll get into some more action with this guy in the new year. Also a Type 81 LMG style, basically the Chinese RPK. Pretty good time, just finished that guy off. These things are cool because, among other things, they have a last round bolt hold open, which is, Kind of a cool feature. Also an adjustable gas system on a short stroke piston. Really kind of neat, kind of a departure from your typical AK. 
then this guy is new from the last video. This thing arrived, I think the next day from Chris, that nice little OD green SBR side folder. These things are really neat. Gonna definitely have a video series on this thing soon. This is the latest current gun. This one is in nine mil. So stay tuned, we'll talk more about this guy soon. Yes, it takes Glock mags. <laughs> then down below, we have a couple drawers in here with some fun stuff. This was my bug out locker idea. We talked more about this in the Ultimate Gun Room Part 2, which was all about storing guns and gear in a uh, especially badass tool chest. So we went into that, we went into this concept of the bug out locker, which is like a bug out bag, but a little different. It's been slightly pilfered. There's a few things on the wall that were typically in here, but we have this one and below it we have another with a G36K. These things are really cool. Just a great, great little HK, the classic dual optic carry handle. Do need a little adapter so I can run this thing on, on 1913 rail because then we're going to have a lot of fun. Anyways, guys, that's going to wrap up this collection tour. There will be more soon because we're getting another safe in from Rhino Metals, which is going to store a lot more crazy stuff. I've taken from the comment section. Do you guys also want to see a mill serp collection tour? So I'll get, I have a few mill serps. I'll get together with a buddy. We'll pile up a whole bunch. Sometime after the new safe arrives, we'll, uh, we'll do that good and proper. Anyways, guys, I'm now off to edit this video whilst watching Die Hard and Home Alone 1 in that order. If you entered the giveaway, keep a lookout for my response to your comment if you won and or that community post. If you didn't win, thanks for trying. I'm, sounds like we're going to do another giveaway with AccuTech via my Instagram page early in the new year as well. So look out for that again at arm.and.gun. Check it out. You won't regret it. Guys, thanks a ton. Merry Christmas. Rest in peace, Hans Gruber. And to the rest of you, yippee ki -yay, mother.